Working with the Florida Department of Law Enforcement on the direction of Troy Every person in that school that possibly were able to find some mistakes, the suspect in charge of person is convicted. Over again. If a person is predisposed to drive a truck up a crowded area, and the the mental health is uh, I've said this time and time again. You know, well, while we care and the victim of the mental health illness around them, they'll purchase or carry a handgun. And fatalities, students, or is it a mixture of students and teachers? And can you give anything on motive? We don't know. Well, so you're going to report. Can you move back because I keep hearing you? Can you go back there and do that though? It's, it's very distracting. Can you get back to whether there's students, teachers, a mixture of both? It's a mixture. I don't know if there are any teachers, but uh, there will be one. Uh, you know, there's certainly students and uh, certainly adults. I believe there will be one, so our investigators have, uh, that's a great question, our investigators have certainly uh, began uh, dissecting social media and looking. I believe there will be one, so our investigators have, uh, that's a great question, our investigators have certainly uh, began uh, dissecting social media and looking at the website and the uh, uh, Nicholas, I think we spell his name, N-I-K-O-L-A-S, Cruz was the killer. Uh, he is in custody, and we've already began to uh, began to dissect his websites and things that social media that he was on, and some of the things that come to mind are very, very disturbing. Well, have and we've already began to uh, began to dissect his websites and the things that social media that he was on, and some of the things that come to mind are very, very disturbing. Well, he have Also learned today that the shooter was a member of a white nationalist organization They're called the Republic of Florida. They say they consider themselves a white civil rights organization fighting for white identitarian. I've never heard that first, uh, the first uh, gentleman you named, I've never heard his name before. Thank you very much, appreciate it.
there any signs that you know of? I believe there will be one, so our investigators have... Uh, that's a great question. Our investigators... I believe there will be one, so our investigators have... Uh, that's a great... S certainly, uh... I believe there will be one, so our investigators have... That's a great question. Our investigators have began uh, dissecting social media and looking at the website and the... Uh, uh, I've never heard that first, uh, the first uh, gentleman you named, I've never heard his name before. Thank you very much, appreciate it. from reporters and get no I didn't mention release I didn't talk about releasing any video we're examining video I didn't mention release I didn't talk about releasing any video we're examining video and we might release information we, we recover all capture from the video but at this time we have no plans to uh, release any type of surveillance video uh, you know I also want to uh, Acknowledge Superintendent Runs. So he's been with us for the, for the uh, yeah, sir. Sure. Yeah, sir. Yeah, he's not up with us. One follow-up, Sheriff, you did say that you don't have a political ideology, but there are numerous pictures of you featured with Debbie Wasserman Schultz, Hillary Clinton. This interview is done. All right. Debbie Wasserman Schultz, Hillary Clinton. This interview is done. All right. Why do you think there's not a lot of emphasis in the community being placed on the FBI dropping the ball? Because I'm finding that a lot of the rhetoric, especially among community members, is very anti-Trump when really uh, I think that law enforcement should be uh, holding the FBI more accountable. Would you agree or disagree? No, disagree. Uh, this is the, the only person accountable for this killing is the detestable, cowardly murderer. He is solely responsible for this horrific act. We do need to have some gun control reform. 18-year-olds should never have a rifle. An 18-year-old kid should not have a rifle. 18-year-old kid, they're, they're not adults yet. They're going, they're adults. You just told this group of people that you are standing up for them. You're not standing up for them until you say, I want Sheriff Scott Israel would never blame his own repeated failures for the shooting at Stoneman Douglas High School. Instead, he needed to blame an organization that was not involved.
The suspect crossed fields and ran west along with others who were fleeing and tried to mix in with the group that were running away, fearing for their lives. The suspect arrived at the Walmart store. He bought a drink at the subway and then left the Walmart on foot. The suspect went to McDonald's, sat down for a short period of time. This was at 3.01 p.m. and he left on foot. At 3.41 p.m., 40 minutes after he departed from the McDonald's, the suspect was detained at 4700 Wyndham Lakes Drive in Coral Springs by an officer from the Coconut Creek Police Department. He was taken into custody without incident. outside of running fits in perfectly. Uh, he could have shot them. He could have been within the school. They could have been outside. You know, well, it fits in perfectly. Uh, he could have shot them. He could have been within the school. They could have been outside. You know, th this is an AR-15. This is a powerful rifle and could have easily gone through a door or, 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 or shot while the door was open. So we're still examining video. Uh, it's a great question. No, I didn't mention release. I didn't talk about releasing any video. We're examining video, and we might release information we we would cover all capture from the video. But at this time, we have no plans to uh, release any type of surveillance video. The investigation will continue. We're not going to disclose the video at this time, and we may never disclose the video, depending on the prosecution and the criminal case. Scott Peterson was absolutely on campus for, that, for this entire event. He was armed, he was in uniform. After seeing video, witness statements, and Scott Peterson's very own statement, I decided this morning to suspend Scott Peterson without pay and an internal investigation. The investigation will continue. Eight days after the Parkland shooting, 
It would be Scott Peterson's last day as a police officer, but he didn't know why until this. And he never went in. The captain was driving me home and my phone started, you know, going off saying that, you know, Sheriff Israel is basically, you know, ripping you apart. You know, people started to text me. Yes. Yeah. Kerry, before, I wanted to get back to your question before. Who arrived first, Coral Springs? Uh, Fort Lauderdale was there. There were uh, obviously the Brown Sheriff's Office. There were a lot of agencies there, federal, state, and local. It doesn't matter who went in first. It doesn't matter in what order you went in. I don't think a, a crime scene that's that big, with that many witnesses, with that many people injured, that you could have completed a full investigation within eight days. I don't think it's possible. We're not going to disclose the video at this time and we may never disclose the video. But what I saw was a deputy arrive at the west side of Building 12, take up a position, and he never went in. There, is he the only uh, deputy that's out there for a time yes. while this is happening? Any questions? I'm sure some are saying that he hit inside the classroom, but that's not accurate. That's not accurate. Mm -hmm. Outside. Now let's get to the bottom of all of this with Jeff Bell. He's the president of Broward Sheriff's Office, uh, Office Deputies Association, who is also a sheriff's deputy himself. It's good to see you, sir. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Uh, these new reports that came me. out, absolutely, the new reports that came out now have uh, a total of four sheriff's deputies who did not enter that school building as the shooting was taking place. What do you know about this tonight? Uh, I've heard rumors about that report myself, but I have nothing to substantiate that any of those uh, claims are factual at this time. Were the police stole, told to stand down? Did the police tell emergency responders to stand down? And we're going to take a look at the government's record on mental health, because all of this is relevant to the big gun control debate. Why are you calling for his resignation? There's just a clear failure here, Liz. Look, it's not just that the uh, SRO didn't respond that was on campus. Then we find out three other deputies respond, but they don't go in. Then we find out what you just said, that not only is it more than two dozen calls that they've reported, but maybe twice as many calls to the House over the past several years. Uh, you know, it, it's not just about Mr. Cruz and the failures that happened here. What else don't we know about? Completely like understandable that we, un we realize that how angry it is that the Broward uh, Sheriff's Department failed on so many different levels and they didn't act properly. And I think that it's a representation of his leadership. He has to be held accountable for the inactions of the Broward Sheriff's Department. Good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. It's becoming clear that a long trail of official negligence led to the Valentine's Day school shooting in Parkland, Florida. School officials failed, so did the FBI, but Broward County Sheriff Scott Israel has a distinguished record of exceptional ineptitude and arrogance. I exercise my, my due diligence. I've given amazing leadership to this agency. Amazing leadership? Uh, I've worked, yes, Jake, uh, this is, there's, there's a lot of things we've done. Through. Under Israel's leadership, Broward deputies ignored repeated warnings about Nicholas Cruz's violent behavior. The department received at least 23 calls about Cruz or his family. In one call last November, a tipster specifically warned that Nicholas Cruz was, quote, a school shooter in the making, which of course turned out to be sadly true. Sheriff Israel did nothing. Under Israel's leadership, the department entered an agreement to drastically reduce student arrests. The goal was to eliminate the so-called school-to-prison pipeline, which at the time was a top priority of President Obama and Attorney General Eric Holder. The effect was a disaster. This, I remember Grant, and I think everybody else remembers too, on the stage for that town hall, the sheriff was talking about how important it was to release this video. And then he turns around and is fighting the release of it. So the Miami Herald and a couple of other publications have gone after the sheriff. And by the way, you know, when we talk about media accountability and we talk about media irresponsibility, I think it's important to note when you have news outlets that do it right. And Miami Herald has been doing, and WSBN have been doing a fantastic job 
uh, at covering this, and particularly the Miami Herald, which has stayed on this this hugely important issue. And the the sheriff says, well, I can't release this footage. Grant, he's telling everyone he can't release the footage because, oh, it's an ongoing investigation, and it just it, it shows too much about the security plan. But the Miami Herald and a bunch of legal experts whom they've interviewed say, hold up. That's a pretty specious argument, considering the building of, that this footage is of is going to be demolished. It's no longer in use. And actually, there's nothing that would hurt any investigation by releasing this video. Not, none of your arguments make any sense. They don't hold any legal water. So now, the sheriff is locked in a legal battle with Miami Herald and, and these other publications uh, because he's now refused to release this video. And I think that we all should be asking why. Why has he refused to release this? This was something, Grant, I know you remember this. He championed this. He said, we have to release this video. We're going to show everybody exactly what happened. Happen. And then, as it came out that it was under his office, under his command, it was actually this dereliction of duty that's on that's on his hands. Uh, now he doesn't want to release it, and he's fighting it. The truth is going to come out, just like the Coral Springs police chief said. The truth will come out, Grant. The first priority on an active school shooting is to stop the killing. You don't wait for the SWAT team. You don't hide behind a car. If you're armed, whether as a school resource officer or a first patrol officer, you go after and engage the shooter. This week, we found out four sheriff's deputies hid behind a police car as Nicholas Cruz, an armed assassin with an AR-15, slaughtered 17 at the Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School. Now, Broward County Sheriff Scott Israel says he was outraged and surprised when he saw the video of one of his deputies doing nothing as innocents were massacred. Surprised? Why didn't you know about this on the night of the killings? Did you not set up a mobile command center, a unified command center where officers from multiple agencies go back to the command post to brief on what has happened? Do you not know any of this because you were too busy making media rounds, deflecting and redirecting the outrage and fury that should have been directed at you by your going after instead the NRA and Dana Lash? Believe me, there's enough blame to go around, but you and only you had an officer assigned to that school, Sheriff Cruz, who's uh, Sheriff Israel, whose job was to protect children. So why only two days ago did we find out what you had to know the night of the shooting? Neighboring police department, Coral Springs, they were outraged at the failure and dereliction of duty on the part of your officers. Coral Springs provided the necessary mutual assistance by immediately storming the school. They are the unsung heroes here. They were shocked your deputies were hiding behind their cars. In fact, the Coral Springs police chief wrote, quote, another agency has given the impression it provided the majority of rescue efforts, but the truth will come out in time. Well, chief, the truth is out. Street there that you're talking 
this, this not a street, he's in a school. This is Pine Island right here. Okay. Anybody who's gonna come to the school and shoot the school up, that's gonna be that kid. Because wow. he had problems with everybody. Like all the security people. He was like one of those kids that didn't he was rebellious. You know, he didn't need he had six 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 on his book bag, he had the Jewish just watch, he had all that crazy stuff. So they, they they got rid of him out of the school, they withdrew him out of the school because he had issues, you know. So yeah, we, all, the we, signs we were there. all the signs were there, so they got rid of him. And once I saw him come up, but the only thing that that I, I didn't I didn't really go crazy about a gun or something because he had a pretty big bag in his and it didn't look like a gun bag, it just looked like a, a nice size kind of like duffel bag. You know what I mean? He then said to me, "Get out of here. It's gonna start getting messy." And where was he loading his gun? On the stairwell, the bottom stairwell. He took it out of like a gun case that kind of looked like a guitar case. And a lot of kids at the school bring those bags for ROTC and they carry their little thing, color guard, that they flip up kind of thing. And they always come on with those kind of bags. So, but when he started running, I knew, I already knew. And you, said once, and you said once he made it to the building, then even a minute later, he still didn't like, well, well, even I'm telling you, one even a minute later when he got in that building, I heard the first bang. Wow. How many bangs do you think? I heard 15 bangs. After the first bang, I heard these 15 bangs. And then it was like five, three sessions of like five, five shots. Over, and it was loud. Like you, you could kind of feel the percussion coming out of that building, the echo coming out of the doors of the building. It was, it was, it was loud. It was kind of, it was kind of surreal to really hear because. To hear that noise, that ain't a firecracker noise. It wasn't like somebody banging. It was something different. And that's when I really, that's when I was like, this, this, there's something going wrong. But I wasn't gonna yell a cool black or cool red because I didn't, I didn't actually visualize a gun, and I didn't really just see the shot. So I'm not, you know, we were, I didn't actually visualize a gun, and I didn't really just see the shot. So I'm not, you know, we were. I didn't actually visualize a gun, and I didn't really just see the shot. So I'm not. You know, we were, we've been doing this training at the school. We've been doing this training at the school. We've been doing this training at the school. You know, don't yell it unless you, you actually get a good visual because you go cold black, they shut the whole, you get all those, all those cops out there for nothing, then I don't want to be the guy who, who caused that, you know? But once I heard the shot, he heard the radio. He said he came down the west side. When he came down the west side, he saw the kid entering and going right up the stairs. When he came down the west side, he saw the kid entering and going right up the stairs. When he came down the west side, he saw the kid entering and going right up the stairs. When he was walking halfway down the, the hallway, he heard the shots and he ran right into a janitor's closet that was right there. And that's what we're, we're our training is. Go in, lock in, close all the doors because in Sandy Hook, supposedly the guy opened up the doors. And he heard the radio. He said he came down the west side. When he came down the west side, he saw the kid entering and going right up the stairs. When he was walking halfway down the, the hallway, he heard the shots and he ran right into a janitor's closet that was right there. Like, that's what we're, we're our training is. Go in, lock in, close all the doors because in Sandy Hook, supposedly the guy opened up the doors and he, he, one door was locked, the other door was locked, and then the third door that was open, then he just went in there. And, and so we got all the, the doors locked. And so we've, been, we've, been, we've been doing training for this for the last two weeks. So wow. it, and it kind of like we've been we've been we've been doing training for this for the last two weeks. So wow. it, and it kind of like we've been we've been we've been doing training for this for the last two weeks. So wow. it, and it kind of like came, have a, uh, came to play uh, today. Fire alarm today. We had a fire alarm this morning. Practice fire alarm as well, just so we can. We, we're, we're been, fire alarm today. We had a fire alarm this morning. Practice fire alarm as well, just so we can. We, we're, we're been, Fire alarm today. We had a fire alarm this morning. Practice fire alarm as well, just so we can. We, we're, we've been working on it, trying to see how the exit. Did you have going. anything? Any other fire alarms that went off after? No, just just when he threw the smoke alarm, when he threw a smoke bomb in the building and the fire alarm. Oh, alarm he did. Yeah, he threw a smoke bomb. He put a gas mask on and threw a smoke bomb. After. No, just just when he threw a smoke alarm, when he threw a smoke bomb in the building and the fire alarm. Oh, alarm. he did. Yeah, he threw a smoke bomb. He put a gas mask on and threw a smoke bomb. That's the first thing he did. The first floor. On the first floor. You can tell us your response to what happened today in Parkland. Well, let me give you some new information. Uh, the gunman was wearing a gas mask and had smoke grenades. Uh, some new information. The gunman was wearing a gas mask. He had smoke grenades. He hit the fire alarm. I'm going to clear up some rumors. Uh, innuendos, misinformation that might be out there. The killer never was in possession of a gas mask 
or any type of smoke grenades. We did recover a balaclava, which for those of you who might not know, is just a, a face mask with eye slits. Again, there was no gas mask or no gas grenades at any time. So he had a gas mask on and he threw smoke bombs into the hallway. Is that what you're hearing? I cannot confirm that he actually threw them, but that is the implication with the information that I got from the FBI. Again, there was no gas mask or no gas grenades at any time. This is strange because he's in full metal garb, helmet, face mask, uh, bulletproof armor, shooting this rifle that I've never seen before. Or on the stair, what one in the stairwell or the first one? On the way up, the first thing he did was throw the smoke bomb and put the mask on. That. They said that over the radio, that they saw that on the cameras. The first thing he did, he put the mask on, he threw a smoke bomb, and then he just started, just, then he started shooting. Anything else you think would be important in this investigation? That's all I got. That's all I saw. And then after that, I was shooting them. They called him down the block, and then I went to go ID him. Oh, so you were on those ideas? Yeah, it was 100% ID. He was still wearing the same clothes? Same clothes, everything. Was, was he carrying any of the bags? No, they got him to the ground. He, he blended in with the kids. When the kids were all evacuated, supposedly he, they, they, he threw stuff in. They got him on the camera, putting his stuff in the, in the building where he came out, and he just ran with the rest of the kids and blended in with the rest of the kids. And, and, yeah. For him to get where he was at, he, would, like, he was running. He must have been motivated because there's a lake that goes all the way to Coral Ridge, so there's no way he can cross this way. He had to come out of the middle school that was there, walk along the main road, get to where that Walmart's at, way out there, and he got caught like way over here. So he west, I mean to the to the southwest. He got caught way southwest from in the schools over here. He got caught way so he he did a lot of running and, and trying to get away, you know, to, to get where he was at unless he had help. But other than that, he, he did a lot of running. So he was that is from shrapnel that is lodged behind my eyeball. Samantha was on the first floor in room 1214 at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas Senior High last week when she heard those gunshots, then the fire alarm, and saw the shooter, who cops have since identified as 19-year-old Nicholas Cruz. He never entered the classroom. He shoved his barrel through the window of the glass and started spraying the room. When the shooting stopped, I looked up and I looked at the window and he was standing there just looking in. He had absolutely no facial expression whatsoever. He had absolutely no facial expression whatsoever. He had absolutely no facial expression whatsoever. No facial expression whatsoever. And you were the person who came face to face with the gunman. Tell us what you were able to tell police about that. Well, I was able to tell the police um, the type of clothing he was wearing, the type of gun, um, the optics and the magazines that he was using. Um, where he was located. Yeah, where he was located. I unlocked my door and the kids just start pouring in my room. I don't know how many kids were in there, but I was pulling them and getting them in and shouting at them to get in the room. And then I suddenly saw the shooter about 20 feet from me, standing at the end of the hallway, actively shooting down the hallway, just a barrage of bullets. And I'm staring at him thinking, why is the police here? This is strange, because he's in full metal garb, helmet, face mask, uh, bulletproof armor, shooting this rifle that I've never seen before. No, I didn't mention release. I didn't talk about releasing any video. We're examining video. I didn't mention release. I didn't talk about releasing any video. We're examining video. And we might release information we, we recover all capture from the video. But at this time, we have no plans to uh, release any type of surveillance video. I gotta say this too. You know, it's amazing. We talked about nobody's ever complained about me. Now we have the Parkland shooting, right, Nathan? 
Yeah, we have to be careful on that. Yeah, we talked about that. Okay, that I, show is gone. That show is I gone. Was, but I was hired in Broward County as their school safety consultant in 06, 08. Nathan, I developed their entire active shooter protocol. And you know what? Nobody's calling me a fraud or a hoaxer. I've not had any, not one call, not one email saying you're wrong about Parkland shooting. You know why? Because I developed their program. And what's amazing, the only thing as a state trooper that I've learned so far, there are two things. Never, ever in a major school shooting event have we had an eyewitness, which is Stacy Lapel, English teacher, okay, in building 12, who is 20 feet, less than 20 feet from the person, and she looks up, she says, what's the police doing here? He's dressed in full metal garb, face mask, helmet, gas mask, you know, full metal garb. And he even shoots me in my arm. He's spraying bullets all down the hallway. Eyewitness. And we can't even get a picture of that person in the stairwell. Nathan, there are 19 high resolution CCTV cameras in that building. How do I know? Because I helped put them in there. They're in the high resolution, okay? And they can't show us one picture of this guy in full, full metal guard going up and down the stairwell. And here you have an eyewitness, Stacy Lapel. It, it's amazing what we do. It's, and then the last part about this, never have I seen a pickup truck white pickup truck back up in the building 12, okay, and watch four SWAT team members with a huge duffel bag, black, two men carrying each end of the duffel bag and the other carrying another bag. They load it into a pickup truck. They are removing evidence. Listen, this is 101 evidence collection. They are removing evidence from a major crime scene and the news media down there never even questions it. Now, you don't think we have a problem about honesty, truth, and trust? Ah, see, that's why, don't make me feel stupid, okay? Let me ask questions. Give me, give me the answers, and I'll go away. I think everybody deserves that, Nathan. I think so, too. You, you got me sweating over here because we brought up that other shooting event in Florida, which practically got everybody banned off YouTube. Um, I think people deserve to be able to ask questions. I think people deserve the truth. The first thing he did was throw the smoke bomb. He put the mask on. That. They said that over the radio, that they saw that on the cameras. First thing he did was throw the smoke bomb and put the mask on. That. They said that over the radio, that they saw that on the cameras. First thing he did was throw the smoke bomb and put the mask on. That. They said that over the radio, that they saw that on the cameras. dropped his rifle and fled Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School, police thought they were seeing him live on security cameras in the building. But the South Florida Sun Sentinel has learned that the cameras did not provide real-time video for police, complicating their efforts to track and pin down the shooter. But it's now being revealed that police on the scene thought they were following events in real time. What they did not realize is that security cameras inside the school worked on a 20-minute delay. They thought they could see the shooter inside the school on video monitors but he had actually already fled. A series of local law enforcement radio transmissions reveal what was happening as police tried to find him. Not with an administrator that had access to the camera system and the school. Peterson would be the one that would have the access to the, where the computer, where the cameras are. I don't know where Peterson is. We need somebody with the camera system to ASAP. Where is the principal? Who's with the principal? And we need to start making a plan here. I got a guy here outside the building with us that can get the cameras. We're going to go inside and go get to the cameras. 
They are monitoring the subject right now. He went from the third floor to the second floor. Third to the second floor. He is now back down on the second floor. He was on the third, back on the second floor now. On the 1200 building. Is that from recording? Is that getting a school? Yes, sir. They're following him. Um, it's, it's about a 20 minutes away. They're following him on video, on the camera. They had him exiting the building, running south. Outdated police radios added to the confusion as officers had trouble communicating with each other. No reception here. Can you try to raise me? Session all units on this air. Just be advised we might be experiencing some radio traffic issues. Parkland is working at 33 at a high school. Just be advised we might have some radio issues. Central units, central units, if you can hear me on this radio, be advised the radios are having malfunctions. You can hear me, but I cannot hear you, so stand by. Just one, they're working on the radios. So further advise, all cities, all radios, be advised to keep your traffic to a minimum. With each transmission, it's causing it to crash. It's overloaded right now for Motorola because the radio is trying to still weak. In May, Broward County Commissioners approved nearly $60 million to replace the radio system. But at the time, officials said it wouldn't be ready to use until the end of this year. For the South Florida Sun Sentinel, I'm Emma Kate Austin. phone is the mayor of Broward County, Beam Fur. Uh, mayor Fur, thanks very much for joining us. What information can you tell us about this awful, awful shooting today? What have you been told? Well, there has, there's not a lot of information out there because it's still an active crime scene. Uh, we do know there are 14 victims. Um, I do not know how many are deceased. Um, they are, you know, the medical examiner is still walking through the building and they're trying to clear it. Sure, so the details are still coming in, so I want to be very careful about what I say. Uh, my, my understanding is we do have the suspect in custody. Um, there is uh, at least one confirmed fatality. And Dan, Dan for, forgive uh, me. For, Dan, forgive us. You said there is a suspect in custody? That's, that's, the, that's my understanding at this point. That would be good news. We have not heard that confirmed yet. So as far as you are hearing as a city commissioner, one suspect is in custody, and what are you hearing about injuries? I've heard at least one confirmed fatality and numerous injuries, so the site is still active. Everybody, as you've reported, uh, should stay in place until cleared by uh, uh, BSO or Coal Springs Police Department officials. Do you know anything about the person killed? These first responders were among the first to enter Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School after a gunman fired indiscriminately at students and teachers. First thing we saw, there was a victim right outside the west doors. Um, we checked on that victim. That victim was deceased. At that moment, I actually felt sick, um, but I know I have a job to do. The building, they say, riddled with bullet holes. Inside, a chilling silence. We think there'd be smoke alarms and screaming. It was eerily silent. Very poor visibility, um, just from the amount of gunfire that had taken place. Spent shell casings all over ground. Um, you can see multiple victims in the hallway immediately that were beyond assistance. I assume that it's a code red drill because they told us earlier in the day that we we're going to be having a code red drill. I assumed it was blanks. One of my former students, a kid who's a senior named Joaquin Oliver, uh, 
screamed, turned, he was shot. At that point, I looked down at the shooter. He looked at me, pointed his AR at me, and started shooting. I smelled dust, and I didn't know what it was, so I thought it was like, like the school trying to pretend like fake smoke. I think that that really speaks to, you know, the training that we had. Um, we had a training about a month ago, and, you know, we talked about, you know, these different scenarios and, and what to do, and so, you know, once we made it to the classroom and, you know, it, we heard the sirens and the helicopters, and it, it was very obvious based on the time that it was happening that it wasn't a drill. They could be practicing a code red. They talked about doing this. They even talked about police coming on and, you know, shooting blanks, you know, to see what would happen. You know, and I said, it's kind of weird. Uh, one of our admins got on and said, okay, evacuate the building. So they all knew where to go because I had briefed them beforehand. We just had all this training uh, and, all, and everything less than maybe about three weeks ago or so. We had a code red from our administration which said that uh, no movement. Everyone, you know, get the, uh, all doors have to be locked back in the classroom. Don't let anybody in even if they're banging on doors. And uh, so I closed my door and luckily I have six of my, six of my students here and we're fine. Are you still inside the building right now, sir? Oh yeah, yeah, I'm in my classroom. You're in your classroom with six students? Right. And I don't know if this is real or fake because we had rumors going around the school that the police would do a fake code red with fake armed gun, uh, fake guns, not actual, but sounding real and I thought at the beginning that this was just, it was all a drill, it was just a drill. Backpacks thrown everywhere. It was like a movie scene. Uh, there was gunpowder all over the floor. You don't, it, it was just so real, but it felt so fake. If I'm going to be honest, it felt like five years, more than that. I was, I was just so scared. I, I wanted to go home. I wanted the cops because my grandfather is a former state trooper. Um, we have been practicing drills for months since we got back from winter break and even before that. So when it first happened, we all thought it was a drill. And as soon as it got closer and closer, we all ran towards my teacher's desk for safety. As the shooting was going on, you can hear the glass shattering through all the halls and the bullet holes piercing the walls and everything. And it was just so horrible. Still, she managed to call her father, who works for the sheriff's office. He went to the school and found Hannah. When I, when my dad picked me up, he picked me up about a mile that way down Pine Island Road, and he was coming from work. He, he turned on his lights and work truck because he works for BSO. At first, it sounded like firecrackers because we had been planning for an event to happen, something like a stage area where we're going to do an active shooter scenario. So the first seven gunshots that I originally heard just sounded like firecrackers because they were so far away and it echoed through a hallway. But as more shots came in, I realized that it wasn't a uh, firecracker, it was actually an armed shooter and this wasn't a drill. And that's when I heard two uh, shots fired in the hallway. The first two shots, like, everyone in the room froze, right? Everyone was under the impression it was a drill, that's what we said to each other. And the third shot was fired and that's when we knew that it wasn't a drill. I can't believe it. I honestly, I can't believe it. So, um, basically, I was just in my biology class, right? And the drill went off. And we all thought, we all, we all thought it was a fire drill. So we started getting out, and then I heard some shots, and everybody started running. We just hit the, the JRTC room, and we were all pretty scared, but it was, it was a pretty scary situation. We didn't really know what was going on. I thought it was a drill at first. I guess maybe in the last two weeks, administration was telling teachers to lock their doors. Um, this is actually just, it's a miracle because if, if they didn't start cracking down on teachers with their unlocked doors, then it's possible that I wouldn't be here right now. We've been doing this training at the school. We've been doing this training at the school. We've been doing this training at the school. You know, don't yell it unless you, you actually get a good picture. I went running around trying to find out where I was supposed to be and I got locked out in my classroom with a couple other kids. And we couldn't get into a classroom. We were all stuck in the hallway, kind of just running. We didn't know where he was. We couldn't hear the gunshots anymore. How did you know there was a he? So you heard shots? Yeah, we did hear shots. And did you think instantly, oh my god, those were gunshots? Or did you think it was balloons popping, as one student told me? And how would you even know what it would sound like? I thought it was a drill because they told us we would have police officers who were going to be firing blanks to like, scare us, get us like, you know, trained for this. Um, so no one took it seriously until I heard like, screaming. It was the worst screaming I'll ever hear. It was awful.
like a blank like we're not sure what to believe because at first and i think all of my peers can agree with this unless you know you're in the 1200 like we all thought it was a drill all of us because we were told beforehand by our teachers that we would have an active shooter drill so until we saw the headlines until we saw the videos that were circulating around until we got the real-time updates until our parents called us and said no this is real until we heard the helicopter choppers above us until we heard the sirens coming to our school all of us didn't think it was real so at that point that's when we, that's when we realized it was real and then I, I thought it was a joke i thought i thought must he must not be like because they told us that they were gonna have like fake you know and have people being taken away and like have them scream or whatever so i was like they like must in, be like fake. in a school drill like yeah, is that like a drill and um so i just figured it was that but it was like so real what you are watching is exclusive footage from NBC News of an active shooter drill. It's the 13th such drill the school district has staged in the past year. And the victims are students, all volunteers. King of places I would hide or run if in the scenario that had ever happened. I couldn't think of any. And schools all across the country, from Texas to Indiana to Oregon, have staged the kind of drill you are seeing here. And then I ran past the office and I saw more people dead, like uh, kids I see in choir every day. And it was, it was starting to get to me. And then I like, and then I saw the gunman like right in front of me. And I stopped and I meant to run, but I was kind of frozen in my spot. And he shot me and I was like, I died, so. It has been to send adults playing the role of homicidal gunmen into schools. It has been to teach kids the best way to shield their bodies from the bullets. This is duck and cover for a new generation. Tell us what happened and what you heard unfold as you were in school today. So the first thing that I heard was one single gunshot. We initially thought it was a drill, but it turned out to be anything but. After we heard the first gunshot, we started heading down the way because the presumed fire, the person that was shooting up the school pulled the fire alarm to get more soft targets. In all honesty, it was more shocked than anything. We thought this was a drill initially because we had been having rumors that there was going to be a code red drill for a while. So while you were in the school, you said your sister was also there. Did you know where she was? I mean, this had to be a terrifying time. It was absolutely horrifying, but we actually thought it was a drill uh, initially because we had been hearing, we had been hearing about having a possible code red drill, which is essentially a drill where we have an active shooting, uh, an active shooter drill to ensure that we can survive this type of situation. But um, once we were all in the room and we started seeing the headlines, we realized this was anything but a drill. This was life or death. You thought it was a drill, and you only knew it was real from looking at headlines in your phone. Yeah, on our phone. We saw it on Twitter once it was eventually tr uh, trending, but then we also saw multiple headlines coming from local affiliates like WPLG, which is the ABC affiliate here. The, uh, I think it was WSBN, which is Channel 7 here. Yeah, on our phone. We saw it on Twitter once it was eventually tr uh, trending, but then we also saw multiple headlines coming from local affiliates. Just all of them coming in and us looking them up, and that's how we were really able to find it. Um, and that's how we knew this was anything but a drill. And anyways, uh, I was able to reunite with my father, who's a former FBI agent, and my sister eventually later. But uh, first, I, I reunited with my father after the squad had come in and uh, told everybody, get down, put your hands up. And we all ran out of there as fast as we could get out to the street. And once I took that first step out there, I realized this was not a drill. His father is a retired FBI agent, so he recognized immediately that this was a gun, this wasn't a firecracker, this wasn't a drill. We, we really thought this was a drill throughout much of it, surprisingly, because teachers and students had been talking about having a possible code red drill, which is an active shooter drill, uh, for quite some time, and that's what we thought this was. But once we started seeing the headlines, we realized this was anything but a drill. This was life or death. And student journalist, forget student, journalist, David Hogg is here with me now. Uh, uh, David, first of all, we're so happy that you are here and that you're alive and well. Thank you very much for stopping by. It's right now, right? It's an active shooter. It's not a drill. And it's 
survived the situation in our newsroom at WMSD TV, but her two best friends died. And it, it's unbelievable, it's unfathomable to think about. The fact that my sister is calling me at five in the morning when, I, when I'm out doing interviews when I should be in school is a testament to where this country has come. And the fact that we have to deal with these situations again and again and again is unacceptable. How many children are going to have to die until we actually stand up and say this is not okay? Because we can say that it's not okay, but and we can have all these ideas. But without action, these ideas remain ideas, and children die as a result. Here's David Hogg, who can't remember his lines while being interviewed for television. Because we had had a fire alarm earlier that day, and that was a drill, so we thought this was a drill too, just another one. Because uh, we have a lot of fire alarms, uh, a, a lot of fire drills at the school. Mm -hmm. um, 
after we heard the first gunshot, we initially thought it was a drill. Actually, that was a bad choice. It's okay, you're fine. Actually, that was a bad choice because the janitor... Sorry. It's okay. You're fine, David. You're fine. Honestly, when I was going out, I was kind of in... I was in... Okay. When I was going out, I was in shock. Yes, I, uh, I don't know how to put this in first like. So most of my friends that made it out, one of them went into a bathroom in the same, it, I believe, in the same hallway as the shooter. Oh, hold on. Okay. One of them went into the same bathroom, I believe, as the hallway shooter. He was in there at the same time, and he was in the bathroom, and he didn't know if he was going to live. Okay. Now, is that David Hogg being told what to say, struggling to get out his lines? Is he camera shy? I mean, what's the deal there? It's pretty strange stuff. You'd think if you were just giving an account of the honest truth and what you experienced, that you wouldn't struggle like that. Well, I was in my AP environmental science class when the first gunshot rang out. Immediately, we looked around our classroom and told the teacher to close the door. She closed On the day of the shooting, I got my camera and got on my bike and rode as fast as I could three miles from my house to the school to get as much video and get on as many interviews as I could because I knew that it, this could not be another mass shooting. This is not about us. I've really thought about this and I've thought about it long and hard. Why would David Hogg have a camera while the mass shooting's going on in a closet but then he's at home and has to get a camera to come cover it because you see people could argue that well he was at the school and he left three miles i guess to get a camera and then came back three miles that's not what he said and then by then the shooting would be over he wouldn't be in a closet so there's no way that, that, that he either made up some of his stories, didn't think it was dramatic enough that he wasn't at the school when it happened. He got there after, he kind of recreated some of it. A lot of, a lot of journalists have been caught doing that before. Or he really was at the school during the shooting and for some reason just said he was at home and he's lying about that. I mean, you can't look at this as a police investigator or a journalist or anybody and say, well, there's nothing going on here. But I'm just trying to figure this out. One way or another, maybe from the stress, he completely blacked out. That's happened before, PTSD. And just had amnesia when he was at the school and shot these videos at the shooters right outside and uh, we're waiting for the police and all this. And he had amnesia. And then he went home and then had amnesia and then went back once he didn't have amnesia. I'm not being sarcastic. I'm trying to believe David Hogg. And maybe when he wrote about good thing that billions of people die from mosquitoes because we need to depopulate the earth, maybe he has multiple personalities and that was the bad personality. Maybe there's a good personality. A sweet person that does care about 16 dead young people. Or whatever. Just say I love you, honestly. That's what this world needs. We don't need anybody else being super mean to each other like Laura was to me or anybody else. They're pathetic <laughs> that want to keep killing our children. They could have blood from children spattered all over their faces and they wouldn't take action because they'll still see those dollar signs. Just say I love you, honestly. That's what this world needs. When you're when your old ass parents like, I don't know how to send an I message, and you're just like, give me the phone, and you take, and you're like, okay, let me parents. handle it, and you wow. get it done in one second. Sadly, that's what we have to do with our government because our parents don't know how to use a democracy, so we have to. It oh just makes me gosh. think what sick are out there that want to continue to sell more guns, murder more children, and honestly just get reelected. Where? What, what type of person are you when you want to see more money than children's lives? How, what type of person does that? Just say I love you, honestly. That's what this world needs. Do you accept her apology? No. Just say I love you, honestly. That's what this world needs. That's what March for Our Lives is doing. We're here to save your life and anybody that disagrees with us or anybody that's for us.
Can I ask you one last question real fast? Um, I'll get to you real fast. So obviously the NRA is out there, which I don't know if it's like a counter protest. I haven't seen it, but they're getting signups. They're kind of like an opposition. And obviously there are some conspiracy theories that people go around and they say, oh, David Hogg wasn't even at the school the day the shooting happened. Can we like end that conspiracy theory once and for all and clarify to people? Okay, it's fine. I was at school during the day. I was at school during the shooting. I interviewed people not knowing whether or not I was going to fucking die. You know, how much more evidence do you need than that? I was in school. I got over 20 videos of people. I believe, I believe you. I was just, I'm just wondering. Thank you. You guys are great. Thank you very much. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Where are you from, sir? Oh, we're just independent journalists. What's your name? Uh, Elijah Schaefer. Yeah, awesome. Check it out. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Thanks, David. Thanks. Here, he, he'll do an interview right here. He's much for life. Okay. Yes, sir, we're done. Oh, we're done. Okay. Yeah. We'll just leave then if you're gonna be if you're gonna be like aggressive. If you're gonna be aggressive, sorry. Alright, thank you. Come on. What's up guys? Awesome. Yeah, I think. Hold up. Hold up. What's going on? I, they said they said we're not supposed to engage, though, right? But I'm, I'm sure the press. We could ask them what they're doing, right? And that's fine. Just say what are you guys doing. They, they just did right now. We asked some hard questions, and then they got mad at us. I don't know why. We actually do ask really good, tough questions. Though. Me? Yeah. Is that a journalist? Uh, what's your name? Elijah Schaefer. Do you have a card? With any um, no, I don't. But I, you can look my name up, and you'll find it on Instagram, you social media. Your Instagram yeah, yeah, yeah. It's my, it's my full name. It's, it's on there. Huh. We just control it right here. That one we got attacked yesterday. If you go back, this one we're at the hospital today. Okay. We're done. Thank okay. You. All right. Thank you. All right. I don't know that what that was about. Are you recording right now? Yeah, I don't know what that was about. We just got. That was weird. That was really weird. Okay, well, that was one way to cut interviews. What's up, guys? Good to see you. I, I thought it was a joke. I thought I thought must he must not be, like, because they told us that they were going to have, like, fake, you know, and have people being taken away and, like, have them scream or whatever. So I was like, it like, must like be Like in fake. a school drill? Like, yeah, is like that a drill. And um, so I just figured it was that, but it was, like, so real. I could hear his voice. He was very, very, like, gasping. Now, I know you told me you didn't know the guy who was shooting and you hardly saw him, but of what you saw, can you tell me what you saw you didn't know him? It was just a split. There was like two people run past and it was just black. I couldn't see anything. And the slit that I was looking through was so thin that it was just like, right, like one, two. Was he saying anything? Was he I screaming? I heard laughing. I heard laughing. Right when they walked through the door and then I heard people run down the stairs and then, and then that was it for a little while. And then it was just somebody screaming, help me kids to go outside so they can start shooting up so they shot they started shooting um from the first floor up because there's only two exits in the freshman building so everybody started running to the other exits but that's when the shooter the other shooter started coming up so everybody and then i thank god to this teacher who opened up her door and like all of us said she got shot in the arm trying to open the door and then the other teacher he got shot in the head trying to pet the other students and um it was like an hour like it felt like years waiting for them and after all that, we finally got out and like they started yelling at us to keep focused and to pay attention ahead, the army people, because they didn't want us to see the bodies that they hid in the, in the corner. They were putting mats over them so we wouldn't see them. But there was dust all over the floor from um, the like this weird thing they threw in there. They're trying. So to you think there was more than? Do you think there was more than one? There's shooter? three shooters. Right here. Definitely. How terrifying! Hold on one second now. How terrifying! It was pretty damn terrifying because we because they, they were putting us through drills and we all thought this I'll was a right drill. Back. We thought this was a drill, but it wasn't. And then we just started hearing the gunshots and it was really terrifying because my class, the class that I ran into, he started shooting through the door and he came through and he started shooting the cabinets and that's when he shot the teacher. And then they started and then he ran back outside to shoot the other teacher who was closing the other door for the kids, but he didn't get to close the door 
like the influence is there. And so we were all just sushing, sushing each other, like shut up, just suck it up and we're crying because we're not trying to get shot. Because he was in the hallway yelling, hey, hey, trying to chill, taunt us and get us to say things, trying to get us outside. And that's when some other kid, like he ran out because he thought it was free, but he got shot and then we heard the groaning outside and we couldn't do anything. What, so the shooter, tell me, besides, hey, hey, what was he saying during He wasn't office? doing anything. He was legit. He just ran up the stairs, started shooting, and you could see a bunch of kids just going down that way, but stopping. But they because the other shooting was coming. So everybody was training. Everybody was trampling each other because they were like, hey, do you hear that loud, loud banging sound? And we all thought it was like some kid joking on the stairwell because they're hollow, so you could just hit a stick and it sounds like it. But then we all were like, oh, sh this is real. So we all just started running. It was really... Now, some one student told me that the shooter was wearing a bulletproof vest and a helmet. Did you see that? I saw some other kid. He, when the other kid who came into the classroom, I, he was wearing some type of thing. And, like, but it was like I tried. Not, I was like I froze at that moment because you never know. Because when the gun is like pointed towards you and the thing, you don't know what to do. And you kind of just like pause. And you're just like, is this actually gonna happen? But I felt like he was going after all the teachers because a bunch of teachers got shot. And then, but and any of the kids who were in the way, they got shot. I actually was in the bathroom at the moment and I had came back to my classroom and I knocked on the door and the fire alarm went off and the um, principal came on the speaker and just said everyone needs to evacuate right now so that's what we did uh, as I was going down the stairs I heard a couple shots fired everyone was freaking out saying that it was a gun and um, as we were walking the whole class together I actually was speaking to the suspect, Nicholas Cruz, and as I was speaking to him, he seemed very, I don't, I don't know what the word I want to say is, but um, he was trouble in middle school, so I kind of joked to him about it and said, I'm surprised you weren't the one who did it, and he just gave me a huh, so uh, that's really, really what happened. You were walking down the hall, he had already fired at that time. Yes, sir, with him. Weren't you scared? Um, in the moment I wasn't because there was obviously definitely another shooter involved, but... Oh, you think he was not the only one? No, definitely not. Why do you say that? Um, because when shots were fired, I saw him after the fact. So, and the shots were coming from the other part of the building. So there definitely had to be two shooters involved, I believe. That's the first I've heard of that. Did you see any other students who were wounded? Um, no, sir. We're all in shock. Let me just tell you this. We just spoke with a former student, Alexa Medick. She actually walked down the hall with the accused shooter, Nicholas Cruz, after she heard shots fired. She said, hey, Nicholas, this is what she told me on camera. We will have it for a 10 o'clock show. She said, hey, I just heard shots fired. I'm surprised it wasn't you. Just kidding like that. He had his reaction what and then they parted ways she said i heard more shots after that she thinks there was a second shooter that's the first we've heard of that but she believes there was actually a second shooter we'll see if that uh, comes about or not again authorities still inside searching he went to school with nicholas cruz since um the sixth grade he says they you know fell out of touch about a year ago but he says they met again on the day of the shooting Ethan True is a senior at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School. He says Wednesday he was on the other side of the school next to the garden when the fire drill started. He says at first everyone lined up outside as normal, but then they were pushed further away toward the fence near a local middle school. And he says that's when he saw Nicholas Cruz walk right by him. I remember seeing Nick Cruz uh, walk beside, like walk past me. He was, he was looking down, you know, he was on 320, I guess, and he walked. Um, he walked right past me, and uh, my friend Alexa and I, we noticed him, but we didn't really say much. And apparently he greeted, like some people greeted him, and he greeted back as normal. He says when he later learned 17 people at the school were shot and killed, and Cruz was the alleged gunman, he couldn't believe it. Not rationalizing or justifying what he did it was completely wrong and disgusting. But from what I've known him since sixth grade, he was probably one of the nicest people I've ever met in my life. And thought he says, you know, he should have seen the signs, noted the signs with his friend. He says he can't wrap his head around this because he didn't see any red flags. 
I'm a freshman, but all my other friends who were older, they said they knew him and everything. So they said he was he was a little off, but like I don't want him to be mean, but they said he was they felt scared around him when like he was at school and everything. And that um he used to work at the dollar store near me. Yeah, That's what they that. said. Well, I, you know what, it, it's sometimes you have to trust your gut, and when someone doesn't feel right, there's a possibility that maybe yeah. he isn't, and he clearly, like one, clearly was one, not. One time I was at the dollar store, and he, he gave me a free balloon. He said, have a nice day, and I'm just like, oh, thank you so much. Like, when you're there, you don't, you don't uh, just judge a person. Like, you just assume, like, oh, it's okay. Like, he just gave me something, and you, you just walk away and have your, the rest of the day. A strange memory to have with this person, right? It's just, it all doesn't make any sense. Yeah, I know about it, Nicholas Cruz because I know him by name, I know him by face, he was in my company. A candy bar, funny enough. That's all he asked for. I think it was Snickers or something like that. So I went out of the store, I bought him it, and the next day, there on after, came in with the uniform every day. Student one. I had him freshman year. You had him in I had him in JROTC, my JROTC program. He was in the other classroom, and I also had him in my marksmanship team, what we used to use the, as the cover. Yeah. Um, I didn't really know him. I just knew that he would come into the class. He wouldn't say anything to anybody, just do what he was told, and then leave. I just find the photo. Uh, we started looking through the JROTC composite, and we uh, found the picture of him, and uh, we just started sending it out to law enforcement. This is and has been our new reality for a long time. We can't even front like these are isolated incidents anymore because it's not. It's the American way. Mass shootings are in the very fiber of America, just like racism. And I have absolutely, positively no idea on how to change this reality. Clearly. I hate everyone and everything. With the power of my AR, you will all know who I am. My love for you, Angie, will never go away. I hope to see you in the afterlife. And one day or another, you will Allegedly showing Cruz in a white shirt first obtained by ABC affiliate WPLG was over a girl Cruz briefly dated. He would hit her, he would threaten her, he would threaten her family and her friends for talking to other guys. I would just that uh, if anything was really to happen at the school like a shooting, that he probably was the only one with enough hate to do so.
I know a lot more than you all do now now so all i'm going to say is yes i believe there needs to be a full investigation i don't think some people were honest we've got to have accountability in this country with the fbi what happened tell us they still with this is you know we can have after who was called what was their process how was it broken give us the facts hold people accountable the local sheriff's department, they've got to be completely transparent. We have to do a thorough investigation, and whoever didn't do their job has to be held accountable. I talk to law enforcement around the state. There's no one I talk to that is not disgusted. about the school shooting in Florida, the more it appears that a Broward County invention may have played a role in what happened. In 2013, Broward County and their new school superintendent, Robert Runcie, had a novel idea. Lower school expulsions and arrests by reducing police involvement. Sounds simple. They called it the Promise Program. Preventing recidivism through opportunities, mentoring, intervention, support, and education, quite an acronym. You see, in 2011 into 2012 school year, Broward had the highest public school-related arrest record in the state. More than 1,000 kids in that year alone were arrested. The Obama administration education secretary, Arne Duncan, and Attorney General Eric Holder were so impressed by the Promise Plan that it inspired their own new national guidelines. Mental illness. The Baker Act in Florida allows law enforcement or medical professionals to confine a person involuntarily while they get examined and looked at. But you have to have a reason. You have to be able to articulate that they're a threat to themselves or a threat to someone else. What I'm asking our lawmakers to do is go back to places like Tallahassee, places like Washington, D.C., and give police the power if they see something on social media, if they see graphic pictures of rifles and blood and gore and guns and bombs, if they see something, horrific language, if they see a person talking about, I want to grow up to be a serial killer, we need to have the power to take that person and bring them before mental health professionals at that particular time, involuntarily, and have them examined. We need to have the power to take that person and bring them before mental health professionals at that particular time involuntarily and have them examined. We need to have the power. 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 We need to have the power to take that person and bring them. Thank you very much, uh, Sheriff Scott Israel. And you know, you're welcome here anytime because we know you're a man of God. Assalamu alaikum. I'm going to do the rest in English, though, if that's okay. Uh, to be here uh, during Ramadan is an honor to me. To speak uh, at, at this mosque, this temple, anytime is an honor. But to be able to come in here and do it during the month of Ramadan, a month of atonement, the holiest month of the year, a month when we're all about family, and, 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 and prayer, that's something special. I have said over and over and over again, we have to measure the success of the Broward Sheriff's Office by the kids we keep out of jail, not the kids we put in jail. We have to take care of our children. We have to give our children second chances and third chances. I know that not every Muslim is a jihadist, but all the jihadists seem to be Muslims. 
Joyce Kaufman has been on talk radio in South Florida for more than 20 years. A hot topic these days is a man named Nazar Hamzi. He's the regional director of CARE, the Council on American Islamic Relations. He's also a sheriff's deputy of Broward County. Anybody in this country is afraid to have a conversation about Islam. Kaufman says Deputy Hamzi wasn't properly vetted, given his connection to CARE, and wants him gone from the police department. I've been called everything, from racist to moron to Islamophobe to one-trick pony. And, you know, I refuse to, to bow down. Are you an Islamophobe? No, not at all. Neither Hamzy nor the sheriff would speak with us, but a spokesperson for the Broward County Sheriff's Department told me Hamzy has been with the department since 2011, a full-time deputy since 2014. The department considers him an excellent deputy and a loyal American. Hamzy travels the state speaking out against extremism and trains Muslims in mosques how to escape an active shooter. Still, Kaufman wants him investigated, and she's not alone. Our cameras were in court today when a judge ruled that four people arrested at a northern New Mexico compound would be released tomorrow with court supervision. The suspects were arrested during a raid last week. Investigators found 11 children living in filth and found the remains of what's believed to be the son of Sharad Wahaj, one of the men arrested. Wahaj is accused of kidnapping his son from Georgia in December. He'll be held because he's wanted out of Georgia. In the hours of that testimony today, disturbing new allegations came to light. That includes testimony from an FBI investigator who said he believes the missing three-year-old from Georgia died during a religious ritual on the compound. News 13's Brittany Bade breaks down what happened in the hearing. Steve and Jessica, the judge said the prosecution threw out a lot of shocking claims but didn't have enough evidence to back them up like the testimony that the toddler Abdul was subject to exorcisms because he was disabled and suffered from seizures. Smiles and hugs in court today as Judge Sarah C. Backus ruled all five adults charged with child abuse do not have to stay in jail until trial. If you have lived in northern New Mexico for any period of time, you are aware that many people here live in unconventional ways. The judge referring to this filthy compound in northern Taos County, where 11 starving children and the body of a small boy were found last week. Today in court, an FBI investigator testified that body belongs to three-year-old Abdul, whose father, Siraj Wahaj, and his Islamic wife, Janie Laville, believed the boy was possessed. The rituals were to expel demons. Special Agent Travis Taylor said adults and children were involved in the rituals and said they happened often until one February day. During this ritual, Abdul passed out and Siraj placed his hand on his chest and could not feel a heartbeat. Everyone at the compound prayed to Abdul's body and the children were told that Abdul would be resurrected and come back as Jesus. As Jesus, Laville said Abdul would tell them which, quote, corrupt institutions to get rid of. These institutions included teachers, military, law enforcement. The defense argued there is no proof of this and that owning an arsenal of high-powered weapons like the ones found on the compound and teaching kids to use them isn't illegal. There's certainly no prohibition against training a 15 or 13 year old how to use a firearm, right? There's no certainly no prohibition against that, correct? None to my knowledge. Taos County Sheriff Jerry Hogriff and his deputies found the body of a little boy nearly 100 feet back in an underground tunnel wrapped in a sheet and plastic. We have one dead child already under the care of these individuals. The state argued all five defendants are a danger to the entire community, but the judge didn't agree. The judge set a $20,000 signature bond for each of them meaning they do not have to pay anything unless they violate their conditions of release. The adults will have to wear ankle monitors and not leave the county. Medical investigators have still not positively identified the body of the little boy. Yes. All right. Thank you, Brittany. After court, the suspect's attorneys told us their clients are being painted as militants because they are black and Muslim. The NRA right now is telling us that guns are a good thing and that we should be training our teenagers to go ahead and use them. Um, but now that we have someone who's actually doing that, and they're not white, and they're not Christian, 
we think that there's some nefarious plan. We live in a country of religious freedom, and if these people were white and Christian, nobody would bat an eye at the idea of faith healing. Authorities testified during the hearing about the tires and wooden pallets that made up the compound. Defense attorneys argue the group has just lived an alternative lifestyle, very different from everyone else. They are allowed supervised visits with the children who are in CYFD custody. Stay with News 13 for the latest.